the fundamental focus of Tesla this year is scaling output. I think that actually the most important product development we're doing this year is is actually the Optimus humanoid robot. This, I think, has the potential to be more significant than the vehicle business over time. Uh, if, you, if you think about the economy, it, it is the foundation of the economy is labor. Capital equipment is distilled labor. So what happens if you don't actually have a labor shortage? I'm not sure what an economy even means at that point. That's what Optimus is about. We continue to drive for vehicle volume growth at or above 50%, as Elon mentioned. And our plans show that this is actually achievable with just our Fremont and Shanghai factories. It really becomes quite a compelling solution to the, the consumer where you integrate the electric vehicles, charging, uh, solar, energy storage, hot water, HVAC, in a very tight, compact package that also looks good. It just doesn't exist. Yeah, the yeah. next logical step is obviously HVAC and, and water and heating. So w- w- we will do that. But our internal goal here by the end of the year is to be in enough locations that 80% of our customers within the U.S. Uh, could choose to sign up for Tesla insurance if they wanted to. 2022 is the year we will be looking at factory locations to see what makes the most sense, possibly with some announcement by the end of this year. Basically, everything pales in comparison to the value of a robo-taxi or, or full self-driving. I, I would be shocked if we do not achieve full self-driving safer than a human this year. I would be shocked. I mean, long-term, probably terawatt hour per year energy business. Yes. I mean, effectively, long-term, every car will have FSD, and the value of that will be a very big number. People just do not understand how profound a change this is. But a lot of these things we're alleviating. I think there's, there's, there's some degree of the toilet paper problem as well, where, you know, there was a toilet paper shortage during COVID. And, uh, like, obviously, it wasn't really an, an, a, a suddenly a, a tremendous enhanced need for ass wiping. Um, it's just people panicked in order to, uh, and got every paper product you probably you could possibly wipe your ass with, basically. Um, in this video, I've made a super cut of the highlights, the meat and bones of Tesla's amazing Q4 and full year 2021 earnings call. There'll be no commentary on this one, just the highlights, so let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store if you want to take it to the next level. Join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. Billion dollars of gap net income in 2021. Our accumulated profitability since the inception of the company became positive, which I think makes us a real company at this point. Uh, this is a critical milestone for the company. Capacity expansion will continue through maximizing output of each factory uh, and building new factories and new locations in the future. Although we're not ready to announce any new locations on this call, but but we will through 2022 look at new locations and probably be able to announce new locations uh, towards the end of this year, right? expect. We, we, we do expect significant growth in 2022 over 2021, you know, comfortably above 50% growth in, in 2022. So over time, we think full self-driving will become the most important source of profitability for Tesla. I mean, actually, if, if you run the numbers on robo-taxis, uh, it's, it's kind of nutty. The, it's, it's nutty good for, for, from a financial standpoint. You know, my, my personal guess is that we will achieve full self-driving this year with, with, with at a safety level significantly greater than, than a person. On the product roadmap, front there's there's quite a lot to talk about i'm not going to go through every sort of thing that we're working on because i think a lot of them deserve product launches of their own uh, as opposed to a few minutes on an earnings call the fundamental focus of tesla this year is scaling output you know both last year and this year if we were to introduce new vehicles our total vehicle output would decrease this is a very important point that i think people do not a lot of people do not understand so last year we spent a lot of engineering and management resources solving supply chain issues rewriting code changing out chips reducing the number of chips we need you know, that was not the only supply chain issue so there's just hundreds of, of, of things and as a result we were able to grow almost 90 percent while almost every other manufacturer contracted last year we, if, if we had introduced say a new car last year, a total vehicle output was, would have been the same because of the constraints, uh, the chips constraints particularly. If, if we'd actually introduced an additional product, that would then require a bunch of attention and resources uh, on that 
increased complexity of, of the additional product, resulting in fewer vehicles actually being delivered. And the same is true of this year. So we will not be introducing new vehicle models this year. It would not make any sense. I think that actually the most important product development we're doing this year is, is actually the Optimus humanoid robot. This, I think, has the potential to be more significant than the vehicle business over time. Uh, if, you, if you think about the economy, it, it is the foundation of the economy is labor. Capital equipment is distilled labor. So what happens if you don't actually have a, a labor shortage? I'm not sure what econ an economy even means at that point. That's what Optimus is about. In addition to using cash to grow the business as quickly as we can, we have been retiring legacy and high interest debt. As we look forward, we expect 2022 to be another significant and exciting year for the company. We continue to drive for vehicle volume growth at or above 50% as Elon mentioned. And our plans show that this is actually achievable with just our Fremont and Shanghai factories. For quite some time now, these factories have been running below capacity due to macro challenges with supply and logistics. Uh, how is the progress of the $25,000 compact car? Can you give an update? We're, we're not currently working on that, that our $25,000 car. You know, at some point we will, but we have enough on our plate right now. Too, too much on our plate, frankly. Um, so, but, but I think that's sort of a question that it's, it's sort of the wrong question, really. It's the really the thing that overwhelmingly matters is uh, when is the car autonomous? Um, at, and at the point at which is autonomous, the cost of transport drops by, I don't know, a factor of four or five. How do you view domestic cooling and heating in the context of accelerating the sustainable energy transition? And how might Tesla's HVAC and heat pump um, advances fit it? I, yeah, I, I think from a mission perspective, it's very aligned. Uh, if you imagine replacing um, natural gas, water, and space heaters with electric heat pumps, it offsets something equivalent to like 80% of what a solar plus power wall system would offset. So it's, it's very impactful. Um, and we have learned a lot about how to make uh, capable and reliable heat pumps uh, that work in all environmental conditions and uh, are excited about the idea of working on that problem one day. <laughs> we put it that way. Uh, it's definitely aligned with our uh, mission to transition to sustainable, accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. It really becomes quite a compelling solution to the, the consumer where you integrate the electric vehicles, charging, uh, solar, energy storage, hot water, HVAC in a very tight, compact package that also looks good. It just doesn't exist. You know, those systems in a house are, are, are no different than the integration of those systems in a vehicle. Yeah. The only difference is yeah. we do it all in a vehicle. It's way hotter than a vehicle. Yeah. And then it's, it's a, so constrained on mass and volume and yeah. energy. It's like you get to the house, you're like, wow. If you have kind of easy problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, obviously those systems yeah. are all just disparate. And, and, and what we've been doing with the power wall and charging and solar is integrating them more and more. Yeah, the yeah. next logical step is obviously HVAC and, and water and heating. So w w we will do that um, and we will integrate it probably better than anyone has but as you said we have a lot of stuff on our plate yeah like if, if we can't find if we can't find a use for it then we shouldn't expect that others would so the first use of the tesla optimus robot would, would be at tesla kind of like moving parts around the factory or something like that uh specifically on the question about when we will be in all states you know this is a slow process because of insurance being regulated at the state level and so we have to go through each of those processes with each of the departments of insurance at each state but our internal goal here by the end of the year is to be in enough locations that 80 percent of our customers within the u.s uh, could choose to sign up for tesla insurance if they wanted to. 2022 is the year we will be looking at factory locations to see what makes the most sense, possibly with some announcement by the end of this year. There's basically, yeah, there's basically four major factors if we look over the last year to the margin improvement in the company. Um, and there are no particular order here, but these are the big ones. So our, our mix of Model Y is increasing you know, as we've ramped that to higher capacity in Fremont and also in Shanghai. And, and the reason that matters is the Model Y is a vehicle that carries a higher profit than the Model 3. Uh, and so that um, is helpful on our margins. And then as we increase the volume on that program with labor efficiencies, fixed cost amortization, they improve and the costs go down as well. Uh, the second one here is, is localization in Shanghai has been a huge help for margins for the company. And, um, you know, the obvious things around logistics and duties uh, is a big part of it, but we've also, that factory had a different line design, more efficient from the start, and we've been pushing the boundaries on the volume there. Uh, so that has been helpful. If you recall at the beginning of the year, we also were in a transition to the new version of the Model S and Model X. And so as that has ramped over the course of the year, that has been helpful. And then we've also done various price increases uh, in certain markets on certain models, um, which has helped there. Basically, everything pales in comparison to the value of a robotaxi or, or for self-driving. 
I mean, it's just, it just, I mean, that just tends to overwhelm everything. You just go from having an asset that is has a utility of perhaps 12 hours a week for passenger car to maybe around 50 or 60 hours a week, so a 5x increase in the utility of an of, of the asset. Cost didn't change. That that's where just things just you had, you know, it's kind of blows your mind. I, I would be shocked if we do not achieve full self driving safer than a human this year. I would be shocked. We we do we do in, like, see a very, I mean, long term probably terawatt hour per year energy business. Yes. I yeah. Mean, we don't think of it as R and D and then like the product development. It's just one fucking go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> one go to just make great products. <laughs> um, you know, I, th- I think the FSD stuff, you really don't want to be looking in the rear view mirror. It will not be a good indicator for the future. You, this is you need to look out the front windscreen because it is such a profound step change. I mean, effectively, long term, every car will have FSD, and the value of that will be a, a very big number. I think it will be cheaper to go point to point with a, with a robo taxi, which is an autonomous Tesla, which every car we've made in the past three or four years will, will be capable of that, than, than a bus or a or a subway. It will cost less than the subsidized value of a bus ticket. But people are, going to take, people are not going to take the bus. <laughs> you know, if, if it costs you, I don't know, for argument's sake, you know, two, two bucks to travel 10 miles point to point, nobody's taking the bus. Especially in cold weather or it's dark or maybe a little bit dangerous or how that, you know, people just, people just do not understand how profound a change this is. It's like the most profound software upgrade maybe in history. Millions of cars suddenly have what, four or five times the utility than they used to have. Overnight. I don't actually know how to quantify that financially, except that it's some big number. On the 4680 as a form factor, yes, we've engaged with a number of our you know, partners, our suppliers, uh, um, the form factor, and they're all working on it. And, you know, they look at it the way we look at it as a way to drive fundamental cost efficiencies in production and and also ultimately the design of the cell itself to, to drive the cost down of, of the cell. So that's that's what's engaged. I mean, we're we're engaged because we think it's a good form factor. They're engaged because they think it's a good form factor and we're we want people to make it for sure. But a lot of these things were alleviating. I think there's this there's some degree of the toilet paper problem as well, where, you know, there was a toilet paper shortage. During COVID, and uh, like obviously, it wasn't really an, an, a, a suddenly a, a tremendous enhanced need for ass wiping. Um, it's just people panicked and ordered to, uh, and got every paper product you probably you could possibly wipe your ass with, basically. Um, and I wasn't sure is this like a real thing or not. I actually, took my kids to the HEB and Walmart in, in Texas to just confirm that this is real. <laughs> Indeed, it was. And there was, there was plenty of food and everything else, but just nothing, no paper products that didn't cause a splinter. An odd choice for people to panic about. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we, we saw just a lot of companies overorder chips uh, and and then buffer the chips, and so we should see. And we are seeing allevi- alleviation in, in that, almost every area. But the output of the vehicle is uh, goes with the, the the least lucky, you know, uh, most, whatever the most problematic item in the entire car is. And there's like ten thousand unique parts in the car. You know, way more than that if you go further off the supply chain. And so it's, it's just, which, which one is going to be the least lucky one this time? It's hard to say. I mean, on a go-forward basis, right, the idea is to continue to drive simplification. So there are fewer unique parts, fewer of them. On the power side in particular, you know, it, it's still like a, an area of like technological development where, you know, the next the next chip can do the same thing with less die area. So like the total fab required to accomplish the function goes down. So so there's still room to grow without needing more fab capacity. But in general, there's a lot more fab capacity coming. So that's like a win-win there. Yeah. Man, there's a lot to discuss, but that will have to wait for another video. Hope you guys and girls have enjoyed this. I know a lot of people don't have the time to sit through these earnings calls in full. So I thought that I'd put the highlights together for those of you short on time or who just want a quick review. If you'd like to support the channel, hit the card in the corner or the link in the pin comment to join patreon you'll gain access to over 100 exclusive q a videos a ton of exclusive content plenty of perks and exclusive access to my up-to-date tesla stock price targets in the bear case the base case and the bull case all the way out until 2031 see you guys soon i'm Stephen mark ryan this is solving the money problem and i love you all hey guys thanks for watching if you enjoy these videos there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel access exclusive content and perks and get some free stocks and crypto check out the links in the pinned comment below you can get two free stocks with weeble a free stock with stake 
free Bitcoin with Coinbase and free Bitcoin with BlockFi and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up to date 10 year Tesla stock price targets and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon or watch the next video.